good morning. This is something new and uh, we hope exciting, the first Oil Boys uh, Forum. We hope that this will become a regular series of events focused on the very large amount of money and activity in the oil field services sector. It's a 250 million, sorry, billion dollars per annum industry. Um, something like 10 billion or so, depending on exactly what you choose to measure, heads in the direction of the seismic last year physics business. Our concept here is that we will have regular forums, uh, probably four a year to start with, covering a wider range of topics as we proceed. We're looking, and today is a good example of presentations by leading innovative companies to keep uh, professionals in our industry uh, up to speed with latest developments and what's going on. Part of this is to provide networking opportunities and of course a free lunch. And you'll notice that uh, we are being videoed. There's a camera there, there's a camera at the back. Uh, the notion here is that um, as we speak, and as the speakers go through their presentations, they'll be recorded and then the uh, slides and speaking will be integrated and streamed through the web, through the Oil Voice website. What it does mean though, from the, your point of view as the audience, is that you've no need to have brought a very large pad of lawyers, A4, paper with you to copy all the diagrams, the stuff will be on the web. It's about a hundred years since the uh, channel was crossed for the first time in powered flight. Uh, this gentleman, some of you who will know, is had the name of Rossi, chose to do it this way about two weeks ago. Uh, there is a point to the accountants who are not involved, because it reminded me of a story that some of you will know, uh, which takes us back about um, 70 years to the time the first uh, seismic was shot offshore in the Gulf of Mexico, actually by uh, Shell Oil in 1939, 1940, that sort of period. And a few years ago, I met a gentleman called Sid Kaufman, who at that time uh, was the chief geophysicist of Shell Oil. And he told me a story about this occasion that, um, of course, seismic had been conducted successfully onshore for many years. And the way they did it uh, was to have a recording party and a uh, shooting party. And following this model, he went down to Galveston Harbour and hired two shrimp boats. Uh, one as the shooting boat and one as a recording boat. Put to sea, they had a very successful uh, project. The sort of thing they were doing at that time was trying to map uh, salt domes by radial shooting, successful project. He came home, um, submitted his expense form to the, uh, to the boss, and he came back from the stairs <coughs> with the uh, immortal uh, lines, next time use one boat. <laughs> <laughs> and his story, I mean, he was 80 um, then, when he told me this story, almost as old as I am now, and he, swore that this was the reason Shell Oil went and invented stream of seismic. <laughs> because an accountant had said next time you going to It's a nice story even if it's not true. Uh, one thing it does illust illustrate, I guess, is uh, a concept that some of you may have heard of. Um, but, uh, you know, if you go to somewhere like Harvard Business School on a short course, they will tell you about the commercialization of technology and talk about what they refer to as the value of debt, i.e. the failure of, sometimes, of great ideas to actually make it to the other side of the, the valley because of some sort of uh, commercial issue, some sort of lack of, lack of need. Um, and the valley becomes a graveyard of uh, great ideas and good intentions. That sort of set me thinking about seismic and the progress it's made over the last few years. And 
you know, our colleagues in the drilling business love to talk about the generation of rigs that they're using, first generation through to fifth, I guess we're up to now. Well, the only thing I know about fifth generation um, rigs is that they now cost you about $650,000, $700,000 a day to hire. A bit like a seismic boat from Western Geco, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's discounted, yeah, that's right. <laughs> so I thought, just quickly flicking through the seismic and thinking about the broader subject of geophysics as well, seems to me that you can say that the first generation of the seismic business was too deep. And what that did, and I'm thinking it from the point of view of a customer now in an oil and gas company, not, I'm not thinking about whether there were great technological innovations in the way we around streamers or in switching from explosives to air guns or in explosives to vibrocytes, but the impact on the customer. You can say that 2D actually made it across the valley a long time ago. It transformed our ability to map structural features at depth, particularly major faulting. Some of you will recognize this as actually being the Grand Canyon. And you can probably say that 2D is now down the other side in the valley, living in a retirement home somewhere in the area of Las Vegas. It's mature, not too many people uh, see it as a great product nowadays. Moving on, 3D obviously started, had its first impact in the mid-80s at field level with its ability to look at a much more subtle structural level and begin to see reservoir. And then when Exploration 3D came on in the early 90s, it fantastically transformed Exploration success rates in areas such as Angola, uh, to some extent the Gulf of Mexico, but particularly the South Atlantic Basin. We come back to the issue during the day that that was an offshore activity. Going on, you can say 4D, which <coughs> You know, 10 years ago in 1998, we were sort of novel and been asking how widely could it, would it finish up being applied. You can clearly see, again, we'll come back to it during the day, has transformed our ability to see oil and gas and water moving around reservoirs. It's clearly a field, uh, targeted at fields and fields that are in production. My starting point here was to talk about, or to think about, the idea of total seismic. You can now see, and this is what we're going to spend a lot of our time on today, uh, a world in which we can shoot and acquire uh, and process uh, any azimuth and understand the results we're getting. Multi-component acquisition and processing is now pretty commonplace. Wireless technology onshore is beginning to transform the basis of onshore 3D. We can understand and interpret much more in the rock physics, uh, the physics of the rocks that we're looking at via the seismic method. And we can contemplate and indeed are undertaking permanent monitoring. And we'll come back to this during the day. We'll come back to all these topics in our agenda. Permanent monitoring, monitoring is taking off for the far side I would think that the others that I've listed there are almost, almost commercially accepted, routine, etc. 